Good afternoon everyone. In today's video we're going to be using our opening range breakout back tester to really understand how that strategy has performed across the S&P, the Dow, the Nasdaq, and the Russell through this high volatility period. Now in case you'd like to follow along, there's two sets of downloads. The first is the opening range breakout indicator. This is free for everyone. You can download it using the link in the description box below. That gives you a good understanding of A, what the strategy is, B, ways you can think about this strategy. We actually then translate that into code, which I think will help hammer down the concept of what the opening range breakout is. For all Volatility Box members, we've taken this one step further and turned the indicator into a backtester. The key benefit of a backtester, in my opinion, is you get a PL so you know whether the strategy works or it doesn't work, and you get to see what the actual win ratio is along the way, which gives you an idea of some strategies might be, say, a 25% win rate, but extremely profitable. Well, I think there's few chances, if any, that most traders can actually perform and execute flawlessly on that 25% win rate. I like to see strategies in which, say, our win rate is greater than that 70 to 75% mark, in which we still have a positive PL, which I think gives you as a trader a little bit more wiggle room in terms of executing on that strategy. Now, the back tester is included for free for all Volatility Box members. You can use the link in the description box to download it and follow along on the major index markets. You can, of course, use the back tester on whatever market, uh, stock, ETF, futures, Forex whatever you'd like. Now in terms of this video, the strategy that I'm looking to test is the following. How has this opening range breakout back tester performed on the past 10 days using a one minute time frame chart? And I'm going to be using a close above or below. I'm waiting for a confirmation to trigger the actual breakout. So using that, how has this strategy performed? And I'm hoping that we can find a clear set of winners and a clear set of losers in terms of these major index markets, which gives us our very first ranking. Now, after we use the 10 day chart, I'm going to expand this to a 30 day time frame chart. So more data points, but the trade off there is instead of a one minute time frame chart, we'll use a three minute time frame chart. That allows us to back test a little bit quicker compared to that 30 day one minute chart on thinkorswim. Once we have one and two, that should give us a basic premise of where is a strategy a little bit more reliable. Out of the four major index markets, my guess is there's a handful where the strategy has worked better in this high volatility period. Now, once we identify that answer, we'll then start to test a few different permutations. So things like wider stops versus narrow stops, same idea with the targets, and that should then give us really a final answer of where do we use the strategy, what are the permutations that are working best, along with what are the permutations that are going to serve you and your trading style best based on what you're comfortable with. Now with that, let's move into our charts and start backtesting with the S&P 500 first. Now inside of our Thinkorswim platform here, if I click the studies icon, you'll see I have just our backtester loaded on. For all Volatility Box members, this is the same one that you can download in the description box, and these are the settings that I'm going to be using. I'll be using close above for the stop type. I've set that to a half range first, along with the target type, also a half range. I'll click OK so we can apply this. One other setting that you'll maybe find useful, if you click global strategy settings, make sure you have this display floating PL turned on. That allows you to have this floating uh, graph right down here below, which makes it very easy to see is this trade green, as in profitable, or red, as in not profitable. So with that, if we click OK, apply, now I have this set to a 10 day, one minute time frame chart. Let's start with the S&P here. The S&P has had nine breakouts, one winner, two losers on the long side. So one for three, a 33% win rate. The short side's quite a bit better though, five for six. So, so far we're seeing S&P short side is the way to go as of right now, where that makes sense in terms of the volatility we're seeing along with the recent price activity. If I switch next to the Dow, the Dow here, one for one on the long, so a little bit better than the S&P, 50% win rate. We got rid of one loser. In terms of our winners, seven for eight, so also performing fairly well on the short side inside of the Dow. Also, the green PL here tells us that the strategy has still been profitable in the long run with both the longs and the shorts. Now, next up, if we switch to the NASDAQ, what I think you'll find is a little bit more interesting. 
Here, the strategy is 1 for 3, meaning 25% win rate, so so far the worst on the long side. And on our short side, 3 for 5, meaning 60%, so so far worst on our short side as well. So 9 breakouts, while we've had the same level of volatility even inside of the NASDAQ, the opening range breakout uh, uh, strategy, excuse me, using these settings has not performed as well compared to the S&P and the Dow. Finally, the Russell. So inside of the Russell, similar story to the NASDAQ here. One for four in terms of the overall setup, three for five, so 60% in terms of the win rate. In both cases, the S&P and the Dow outperform the NASDAQ and the Russell on that 10 day, one minute time frame chart. Now let's switch this over to a 30 day, three minute time frame chart and let's see what happens then so this should load a little bit quicker compared to that one minute now using that our close above keep in mind is now based off of a three minute candle so still the same settings close above half range half range but this time we're using a three minute candle now if i click ok we can see here the number of data points has increased let's actually start with the s p first so using the s p Using the long side trade, 62.5% win rate, so better when we have more data points. Overall, it's above 50% in terms of that basic threshold, but still less than that 70% mark that I think gives you high confidence. The uh, short side, however, 80% win rate, so there we are meeting that minimum threshold we'd like. If we switch next to the Dow, see if that same theme continues. 69% win rate on the long side, 81% win rate on the short side. Also, green PL graph right here, which confirms the idea that the trade strategy overall is profitable. Switching next to the NASDAQ, let's see if the same underperformance continues. Very clear here, that bar graph, red, tells you the strategy not profitable. Take a look at the statistics here, 46.67% on the long side, 64% on the short side. Again, that same idea extrapolates through from what we saw in a 10-day compared to a 3-minute, 30-day uh, time frame chart as well. And finally, we have the Russell here. The Russell, while still green, we can see that PL takes a fairly sharp hit here towards that final day in terms of our back test Friday. Seven winners, seven losers, so 50% win rate, 66.67% win rate. That PL graph here, also 632.50 across all 26 of these trades, compared to something like, say, the SP 500, dramatically better. Same thing with the Dow, SP was 3906, the Dow 4280. So, so far, I think if we summarize the takeaways for going back to our initial hypothesis, I think we can come to number three here and conclude that the S&P and the Dow, and really the Dow is the one I'd put as number one, and the S&P is taking advantage of that, are the two places where the breakout strategy is working better compared to the NASDAQ and the Russell. So let's now spend some time on the S&P and the Dow and start to tweak some of these settings a little bit more and see if there's anything more we can find out here. So coming back inside of now the Dow, let's start to expand our half range to a full range stop. This means we're going from a narrow stop to a wide stop. And the number I'll be focusing on here that I think will be our clear indicator is, is it greater or less than 4280? So full range, if I change this, I think the theory before I click apply is we should see this number increase given that we have wider risk involved. We probably have saved ourselves out of a few losers here. That's at least my guess. Let's click apply. 41, 42.50. So close enough. I'm not sure you can really justify taking on this additional risk um, with the half range versus the full range. If we go back to the half range. Now let's go for a full range target here. Okay, so a full range target on the Dow goes negative. So that information very clearly tells you that the Dow has really only gone to the half range before reversing. If you try to push your luck here going for that full range move, this strategy has not performed well now over the past 30 days. So that's very useful information. We know that we're looking for a half range target. Also the stop here makes sense to have a narrow stop. So, so far let's click OK apply, come back to now the S&P 500 and try tweaking those same uh, few settings again. 3906 is our baseline. If we first switch our stop type from a half range to a full range, that number decreases. So again, being able to cut your losers a little bit quicker, I think is a smarter move here. And if we then come back to a half range, go for a full range target, does this follow suit to the Dow? Our PL here also dramatically drops. So in both cases, half range target, half range uh, stop with that close above tends to be the combination that works better. The last permutation actually on that note, 
Let's see if in the S&P and the Dow, we wait for the confirmation with the close above, or if we're better off with, say, just a wick touch. So 3906, let's see what happens here. That drops to 32.87, so the confirmation actually helped us out in uh, side of the S&P 500. And finally, if I switch back to close above and we end this with the Dow here, using the close above, we had 42.80. And if I switch this to a wick touch, that number drops fairly substantially down to 27.97. So hopefully through this, now let's summarize our takeaways in terms of 0.6. Where at all would we like to focus on the strategy from what we've backtested using both the past 10 and 30 days worth of data, the S&P and the Dow are the two markets where I think the strategy is working better compared to the Nasdaq and the Russell. And inside of the S&P and the Dow, the Dow is outperforming, but both markets I think are working fairly well. And it, so far in terms of the strategy, you wait for the confirmation. So we're waiting for that close above. And we did that using a three minute candle in that final exercise. We're also using the half range stop and the half range target. And that is where I think the strategy is working best right now. Now, for those of you that would like to take this a little bit further, you can of course test other permutations. You can also do things like come in to the studies menu and change the time period you're looking at. Maybe you're looking at being a bit more aggressive with the breakouts with the 9.30 to 9.45 uh, opening range breakout and maybe expanding your entry time. There's lots of different ways that you can test this to find the sweet spot that works best for you. And of course, if say you don't trade futures at all and maybe you'd like to come into a chart of Apple, you can repeat the same exercise inside of a stock chart and find where the strategy is performing better than other places. All right, again, one more time, you can find the links to download both the indicator along with the back tester that we used in this video in the description box below. Back tester, again, for all volatility box members included for free with your membership. So be sure to download it, play around with it. And I think you'll find that the strategy works uh, very well in some markets that you might actually be uh, having on your radar. All right, take care, everyone. Good luck trading, and we'll see you in the next update.